Well, we are having, like in the 70s, a number of negative supply shocks, uh, three of them currently. One was the COVID shock that led to a shutdown of economic activity, bottlenecks in global supply chains, reduction in the labor supply, and so on. Second one was the Russian invasion of Ukraine that led to a spike in energy prices, food, fertilizers, industrial metals. And third one this year is the continuation of the zero tolerance COVID policy of China. Those have led to a reduction in growth and an increase of cost of production. And with loose monetary and fiscal policy have caused inflation and now a sharp slowdown of growth. We're headed towards a recession. However, in the book, what I point out is that the era of great moderation where growth was okay, inflation low, 2%, is over. And now we're going towards an era of what I call great stagflationary and debt instability and crisis. On the supply side, there's not just the three negative supply shocks. In the book, I identify 11 other ones that are more medium long term. They're going to reduce potential growth and increase cost of production. Just to be brief, first of all, deglobalization and protectionism. Secondly, reshoring of manufacturing from low cost China to high cost Europe and US, French shoring. Three, aging of population, not only in advanced economies, but also in major emerging markets like China, like Russia, like South Korea and so on. Young people produce and save and consume less. Older people don't produce, this save. That's inflationary. Four, we are having restriction to migration. In the past, migration from south to north, from poor to rich, was keeping a lead on wage growth. Fifth, we have a decoupling between US and China. Six, a broader geopolitical depression. Seven, we have now climate change that in many ways creates a reduction in growth and increases the cost of food, of water, of energy, and of fuels, and so on. Additionally, we have other shocks. We have cyber warfare. We have pandemics going to be becoming more frequent and more virulent because of climate change. Climate change causes more zoonotic diseases. Mm -hmm. And finally, we have a backlash against liberal democracy and populism of the extreme right and the left because there is a rise in income and wealth inequality. Authoritarian, aggressive autocrats, populists of the right and the left are coming to power. They blame the rest of the world and they go to war like it happened in Russia. We're also weaponizing the US dollar as a tool of national security and foreign policy. That oiling system of the global international monetary system is breaking down and that's going to lead to more friction, more cost of production, less economic growth.